So, uh, well, good morning. So when we're talking about all these business models that are here to disrupt the world and change the world and, you know, are value-driven, and then you have this old-fashioned banker in front of you, that's disruptive in itself, right? That's quite a change. And there's a reason why I'm here, because there's quite some banks that at this moment feel threatened. And if you look at this picture, woof, I'd feel threatened as well. And therefore, when we were reviewing our strategy three, four years ago, we went deep into the analysis as to what our clients were really looking for, what they were really looking for. And we asked them. We went out to 2,000 clients, consumer clients and business clients all alike. And basically, on the back of the crisis, most of them said, well, we will need banking, but we won't be need banks in the future. And that's why these companies, you are so successful, because you deliver something truly different. You do show a difference. You do make a difference. And that's what's so attractive. That's also why in our Think Forward strategy, we basically indicated that we want to empower people to stay a step ahead in life and in business. There is no word as a bank. There is no word of banking here. There is no word of finance in this either. But it's all about what the clients actually do with the money they get from us or the money they put with us or what they do in our ecosystems, because we are developing them very rapidly and thoroughly. And focusing on the primary relationship, a true client, and focusing on the differentiating experience of that relationship, that's what has to make us innovative, and that's why we have to be flexible, and that's why we have to be agile. Now, these words, innovative, flexible, agile, coming from a bank, probably not very convincing, is it? But we do deliver it every day. And the way we like to see ourselves is not like this big tanker that, you know, has difficulties moving an inch because of the changing seas and the changing economy and the changing business models. We look at ourselves more like this. We see the greyhounds being agile and flexible and, and fast, and we see a bank Strong like an elephant, but just as fast and just as flexible. And I'm sure you think, well, Ralph, dream on. You will not be able to do so. And then I can prove you wrong, because we have been able to do so. Why don't you travel with me back in time, 20 years ago, the Internet Revolution? There's two companies that actually made a business, a financial business, on the back of the Internet revolution. One is PayPal, and the other one is ING. We've done it before. And why were we successful then, and why are we successful right now? It is because we are looking at ventures that are truly purpose-driven. And ING Direct was and is truly purpose-driven. And right here in Germany, you see it. ING Diba is the third largest retail bank around in Germany. And we built it from scratch over the last 15 years. More than 8 million customers. The most efficient bank around in Germany. You can do it. It can be done. But it can't be done overnight, and it can't be done as part of this slow bank with strong governance. So you basically have to make sure that the way you work with these startups you give them some space. Yeah, you give them separate reporting lines. You give them the right capital. You make sure they are purpose-driven and truly customer-focused. Where they have the speed, the innovation, and the flexibility, we provide the capital and the marketing. And that's why we've been so successful. Now, clearly, this was one of those things that we created ourselves through our own thinking through our own knowledge of the internet and how we could truly disrupt banks. And we've done it in the US, in Canada, in Spain, in Australia, in Italy. We're still doing it. But sometimes there's better ideas coming from the outside. And you have to be open for that as well. And we are. 
So in 2008, we saw next to ourselves as a challenger in the German market, we saw a company also disrupting the mortgage market called Interhip. And we acquired it. And it have, has been a continuing success ever since. Not because we are the owner, but the way we work with each other. It's not fully integrated, it is cherished, it is cared for, it is supported. It is supported because it does truly deliver a differentiating experience to our clients. Well, actually, it's, 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 it's hard and it's not hard. It's hard from the perspective that, you know, if you're growing bigger, uh, you may become lazy uh, because certainly as a bank, you have a balance sheet and that balance sheet produces um, income and produces profit while not doing too much. So the risk is that you become lazy and that you have a subsidy from the past in your balance sheet not to be very agile nor attentive to the future. Are you describing Deutsche Bank right uh, now? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's, those are your words. But for us, it has come uh, quite naturally uh, to always look at what new technology can do. Um, certainly with, uh, with our history, uh, even in Holland with the post bank, where basically we were the bank that made people banking at home rather than that they had to come to the office. And we have alwa always been thinking about how do you empower people to do stuff themselves? How do you make sure that they trust their own decisions, that you give them the right information, that you use this, the right technology for them to feel in control and to feel empowered to make these kind of decisions? Um, and if you have that as your purpose, which is what we have, then you have to constantly be on the, on the lookout for, is there new technology out there? Are there new players out there? Is there new business models out there that we should use to improve the differentiating experience? Because our strategy is about the experience, not about the product. Retail banking, for example, there's five products in retail banking. They have been like this for the last 100 years, and they will be like that for the next 100 years. So you shouldn't tweak the product but you should influence the experience. And how the easier you make it, the better it is. So we keep to, uh, keep to look at it. And wherever we see developments that we can implement ourselves, we will do so and disrupt ourselves, which is something not so easy to do, to disrupt yourself. But honestly, given the fact that we truly understand what's happening out there, we better disrupt ourselves before somebody else does it. And either we do it ourselves because we have the technology ourselves and we develop it ourselves, or we do it with a player that has a superior technology or speed or yeah. model for us to disrupt ourselves. And you shouldn't be afraid of that. You should never be afraid to do so to improve yourself going forward. So the culture that we have from that perspective is what we really cherish, and that's what keeps us on our toes. And by the way, that's also why, just going back to your first question, that's why we talk about cross-buy and not about cross-sell, because it's only so easy to start thinking like an old-fashioned bank again, to think, well, okay, so I have this customer relationship and I have this opportunity and maybe I slip in another product. That's what we did with the Berlin conference. And, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But that, I, that, that's not how you should do it. Uh, if, if the customer's in the lead, uh, they should be convinced about their own needs and what can satisfy that need. And therefore, it's their active decision to do more with you rather than the fact that we try to be, you know, smart and slip in something.